open another file. Okay, from from my email. Okay. Okay, that file called the um this one, the Power P4 and Power Query in Excel hyphen data bracket English. Okay, I got the email from Brian Chan already. <laughs> yeah, I will consolidate those uh, uh those uh those 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 questions and send to ITS to follow up. Okay. Okay, basically, okay. For we have already got the uh power query. Okay, to um we shift data, we shift our required data from different table. Already, and also from different uh, data source, okay, and also we can making use of the query to merge two data together, and then and then after the consolidation, we've got a new set of data, and then we can do part a uh, PFAP table and do other uh, data analysis process, right? Okay, we have already, okay, streamlined the process with the power query already. However, let's think one more thing. That is, whenever you merge two record together. Okay, is this just a simple two record merge together? Or maybe, okay, for your daily operation, okay, how many tables you need to consult together and put it into one? Most of, most of the people, okay, from FN, they say they need to consolidate at least five tables together to turn it into one single table and then that to start their data analysis process. Wow, that means in the old time they need to do so many VLOOKUP operation in order to get that, that stuff. This is a little bit crazy, right? However, after introduce of the uh, power query, what, how, how their life got changed? That is, they can merge two tables together for one time. That means if they need to merge okay, five tables together, how many merge operations they need to take? That means uh, two for each uh, operation. That means two together, one operation. And then two to one together, okay, and then the second operation. That means that means all together to merge four and uh, five uh, table together. Then they need to operate four times to make a query for four times in order to merge four five five table together, right? This is a little bit crazy, right? And also after we merge all the record together, is that your boss? They uh, what uh, your boss need is the record itself. The answer is no. What your boss need is the report, not the record itself, not the merged record. So we need to step back and think again, okay, if my boss is not looking for a merged record, then what should I look and, and leave? Okay, this is point number one. If I need to merge more than two tables together, then what better solution that the Microsoft Excel provide? This is another question. So that's why I would like to introduce another very good function, that is the power P4 to all of you. Okay, basically power. What does it mean by power? That means you can assess all together more than one table to make a P4 table. Okay, this is that's why they will call it as the power P4. Okay, let's just have a look over here. Okay, you can see here. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight table together, right? Eight table together. That means, okay, I would like to create a uh, a report, okay, and all the data are come from what this big table, right? So what should we do? We need to first of all to merge all the all the table together so that we can generate a report. So how to do it? Okay, uh, first of all. If uh, we need to uh, asset, uh, to manage a large scale of uh, data, then we do need to first of all, okay, to turn our data range into a table first, right? This is my best practice. Okay, so first of all, okay, for first table, the customer information right here, customer information, I would like to turn it into a table. So what should I do? First of all, go to the what? Uh, insert table and then uh, turn it into a table okay and then over here for the table choose i would just uh, simply name it as the tbl customer right this is the first one i would like to do 
Okay, the first table, PBL customer, and this one, customer information. Is it here? Okay. This is first table I would like to make. And the second table here is the um uh, uh the product category. Okay, I just left it behind. Okay, I would like to use this one, the item information one. The item information one. This is actually the item information one, right? Uh, I just uh, turn it into a table. Insert table. Okay, and then name the table as. TBL item zero one. TBL item zero one. Okay. And for this item information, I just left it behind. Okay. And now here, we've got another stuff called the store information, right? store information i just want to uh, turn the store information okay into a table insert table okay and then here just tbl store tbl store so up to this moment how many table we got uh item customer and store fee table we've got right and then one more table i would like to have Please go to the transaction detail. Okay? Just over here. And turn this transaction detail into a table and name it as TBL trans. Now, all together, we've got trans um, stores, items, and also our customer. That means all together we've got four table. Okay, we just uh, we just uh, do analysis with this four table first. Okay, this four table first. I don't want to make the stuff. Okay, very complicated. Okay, we use four table only. Okay, we have already named them right. And now I would like to go through something not new, but quite old. But I still need to go for it. That is something called the schema. Uh, this is a little bit funny because uh, in my okay because I'm I'm very old already okay I'm very old already when I still a undergraduate student okay in the university I learned something called the relational database management system okay I read a little what I need to do is to draw uh, something called the uh, uh, this kind of diagram okay some uh, data basic diagram but now because uh, um, Database management become very uh, common in the world already. So uh, people just want to make them easy. Then they just uh, simply uh, call this kind of structure called the uh, called the schema. Okay, just let me show you. Okay, okay, can you see this? This is basically one of the schema called the star schema. Basically, what is this? Okay, what is star schema? Okay. Basically, most of the time, database. Okay, what are database? Database. How database uh, keep uh, store information in the uh, in the computer? It's like this. Okay, they will treat those uh, information as a table, and different table will uh, will store different kind of information. If between them have some uh, some relationship, we just link them together. Okay, let us uh, make uh, XTS as an example. Okay, most of the time. Okay, for those uh, table at the center part of the uh, schema, we will focus on just like the star itself. Okay, for those uh, subsidiary, okay, a table that is uh, linked to the uh, to the star itself, we just uh, just uh, treat them as those uh, light line, okay, of the star. So we will call this kind of uh, structure called the star schema. Okay, just like the star is here, here are the light exactly. Okay, surrounding the star itself. For example, in the XTS, most of the time, we will treat the case information as the star itself. And for those, okay, uh, 
information related to the case for example the case related to the customer profile okay to know more information about the customer and also the case information will also also link to the supply information and also the item information as well and also for the for the case itself will also link to the invoice information as well so we for for the xts okay we can put it like in um, a star schema. But at the center, the center part is the case, and here is customer profile, and here item profile, and here is the su supplier profile. Okay, is it clear? This is basically the data structure. Okay, I just uh, like uh, make the XTS as an example. Okay, and now just go back to our example. Our example is like that. Okay, we have the transaction details. Okay, at the center part. And we would like to link all the store information, customer information, and also the uh, item information together into one. And what should we do? Okay, now the first part, uh, we have already turned all the stuff into a Excel table. And now what the se second is to put all the table into a something called a, an area called the data model. Okay, how to put all this stuff into a data model? Just go back to the data. Just go to the data. Okay, just click the data, okay? And then over the data tab, can you see a green in color button? This one. In data tools, green in, green in color button called the manage data model. Can you find this button? Just click this button. After you click this button, what happened? Ah, yeah, the first time you enable it, they, they will ask you, okay, whether or not you want to enable the data model, right? Enable it. After you enable it, then what happened? It will open something called the Power P4. Okay, at this moment, I still can't differentiate what is data model and what is Power P4 because uh, both of them are put together into one user interface. So at this moment, I just uh, treat as a data model. Okay, do you know why I treat it as a data model? Because uh, after, okay, after this part, I will try to put all the table inside this data model. After the data model set up, and then we will make use of this data model to create a more complicated P4 table analysis. So at that moment, I will call that operation as the P4 and power P4 operation. Okay, so at the very beginning, okay, we need to first of all to create a data model. Because in the old time, what the uh, what the paper table do is to, to uh, apply the paper table operation on a single table. But now we need to first of all to what to link all the table together to make a data table, a data model, and then we will apply the P four operation on a data model. This is a concept, okay? Quite different and similar also. <laughs> Although it is quite different, but they still have some part are similar. Okay. Now at this moment, what should we do? Okay. Now. Well, the Siri of the new iOS 11 is quite sensitive, okay? When, whenever I shout out, then the Siri will, will have some reaction. <laughs> okay, actually, okay, now, okay, what should we do? Okay, we just uh, simply uh, minimize, okay, the P4 table at, at, this, at this data model operation at, at UI first, okay? Minimize it. Minimize it. Okay, we, uh, what we're going to do is to add the data, uh, add the table into the data model one by one. Okay, first of all, go to this page, customer information, right? And at this moment, okay, this is or, 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 this we have already named it as a TBL customer, right? And then after this moment, okay, because after we click the manage data model, a new tab has already created. Power P4. Can you see a new tab has already created called the Power P4, right? Before you click the data model, manage data model, you can find the Power P4. After you Click the uh, uh, data mo uh, create data model button. Then you can find the tab over here. After that, what you should do here is to click this button, add to data model. Okay. After you click the add to data model, see what happened. It will again prompts the uh, data model user interface, and then what you can see here is some, what you can see here is something similar to our Excel spreadsheet. But one thing you need to bear in mind is like that. Do you know why I would like to like you to first of all to name the data table first? Do you see here? By default, they will uh, for the tabs, okay, inside the data model, 
they will making use of the table name of your uh, of the table in Microsoft Excel. If you wrong name the table, then they will randomly to create to create create some name for you. And this one will become table one, and the second will become table two, table three, table four, so on and so forth. Okay, they will give you some meaningless name. So that's why I would like to suggest you to first of all to name all your data, okay, with data table at the very, very beginning, before you do any data and the analytic stuff. Is it clear? It's very important. And then one day, just uh, add all the rest, okay, table we just create. How to do it? Do the same thing. The main, okay, minimize the table, and then we go to the inform, uh, item information one, and add to data model. One more table being added. And then again, I go to the Go to the store information and again add to data model. Okay, one more model. And again, go to this transaction details and then add to the data model. And then after that, what I got inside the data model is all together, I will have a four table all together can be found inside the data model. Is it here? Hello, hello. Yes. Anybody home? Okay. This is very important, okay? And now, let's have a look. Wow, David, up to this moment, okay, I have already got the one, two, three, four, four table all together. And now, just have an observation, very simple observation. Can you see here, in under the tab, we have an icon over here. The icon is a link. What does it mean? That means all the information you can see inside the data model are not a actual table. They just like to the what Excel spreadsheet, and then we shift the data, and then you let you see inside this uh, under this user interface. Is it here? Okay, this is someone number one, and point number two is how come they look like a uh, Excel spreadsheet? Okay, so. We just uh, do something very interesting first, okay? I just uh, go to the TBL chance, okay, this table first, okay? And then what you can see here is something called the invoice price and invoice cost. Can you see this, right? So what I'm going to do here, just do an example, okay? As long as you find that it's a quite similar to Microsoft Excel, I just try to do something very similar to Microsoft Excel here. Because as a, uh, a guy here, I would like to uh, calculate, okay, all the uh, invoice, uh, the total lump, uh, total price, the total invoice price for all items inside this table. So what you should do here is to type a function, right? So how to do it? Okay, <coughs> I just uh, do some similar thing in Microsoft Excel. If you would like to calculate it, okay. And let me have uh, some briefing, okay, uh, for the details about about this uh, user interface first, okay. The first thing, okay, for those uh, data area, we will have row number over here. However, at the bottom part of this, this spreadsheet, maybe I, I don't want to call it as a spreadsheet, maybe uh, for this calculation area, okay, we will have any row column, a row number over here. Okay, if you write to do a calculation, for example, I may just uh, do calculation here, here, and here. Okay, I just uh, take one of the uh, one of the uh, cell over here, and then I just want to key in my formula. What is my formula? I just simply select this one, and then key in equal to sum. But how come nothing appear over here? Because what you should see is over here. Once you select this cell. Okay, if you type anything inside this cell, okay, it will be shown, okay, in this formula bar, okay. And after that, okay, I would like to sum, sum up something. Sum, sum what? And then it will prompt, okay, you would like to sum which column. They will give you the name of the column. For example, I would like to sum the what? Um, uh, the transaction item, the... Uh, the, 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 the invoice cost. Just simply select the invoice cost and then close bracket. See? Okay, and then after that, I press enter. <coughs> See what happened. Okay, first, it will what? 
it will have a calculation over here, okay? All together, this is the measure one, and then all the inverse cost, okay, sum up all together is this value, okay? Can you see here? And also, it will by default will give something called the measure one. However, if you say, I don't want to have the name called me measure one, okay? It's meaningless, then what should you do? Total cost. Uh, total uh, invoice cost. I just type something like this and then enter again. Then at the bottom part, okay, uh, over here, it will be a name total invoice cost and this is the number. Okay? And what is the use of uh, this kind of uh, calculation? Basically, okay, for example, in database analysis, okay, because uh, we would like to have uh, some uh, calculation. If you would like to perform some calculation and want to uh, retrieve easily, okay, with the uh, relationship accepting in people table, you may first of all calculate this kind of calculation over inside the spreadsheet here. Okay, most of the time this kind of calculation is for the KPI use, okay, because uh, we may be making use of this kind of calculation in order to compare the KPI, okay, the key uh, performance indicator. Okay, we use it as a, K, a KPI. However, this is only a demonstration. And also, if you type the formula, you can find here, okay, the, the formula is more or less the same as that of Microsoft Excel, right? However, the name for this kind of function inside the data model, they will have another name. The name is called the DAX function. Okay, DAX formula. They have another name, okay, for those form uh, formula inside the data model. They call them as a DAX formulas. So in the future, when people ask whether or not you know DAX formula, you may tell them, I know what is DAX formula. Because basically, they are the same as that of Microsoft Excel. Okay, all the formula are the same. But the usage is different. Okay, for DAX formulas, they can only uh, they are limited to use inside the data model, and also what they can call is not with the range A one to A one thousand something like that. They need to call those uh, DAX formula with the table name and table column name as well. Th these are the differences. Okay, you just uh, try uh, try to uh, practice it. Okay, with your desktop machine and know more about DAX formulas. Basically, they are the same. Okay, with that of Microsoft Excel. Okay. Okay. Now, this is what I would like to introduce. This is DAX formulas. Wow, some new stuff, right? <laughs> Actually, and now, okay, okay, we can do calculation over here. But what's the use? Okay, because at the very beginning, I already told you I would like to link all the table together. So what? What? How to do it? Okay. See here. Okay, inside the home tab. Can you see at the top right corner, top right corner, besides the data view, can you see another view called the diagram view, right? Just simply click the diagram view, see what happened. Click the diagram view. Ah, then it will become this kind of stuff. Diagram, diagram view, right? If you know what is Microsoft Access, then you will know what are they. Okay, they're basically the the table, okay, inside database, okay. If you compare with the photo over here, mm, then you will know what you should do, okay. Okay, basically, I have already told you, okay, we have all together, one, two, three, four, four table all together. If you would like to do a data analysis, okay, for this four table, then you need to, first of all, to link up that relationship. How to link up that relationship? Wow, it's very complicated. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, first of all, okay, I will treat, okay, TBL chance, okay, uh, as the uh, the star, inside the star schema, right? All the other table will surrounding it, right? So this is a TBL transaction table. If I would like to, okay, uh, here, we've got something called a customer ID, right? And I would like to link this customer ID with the customer table. Then how to do it? Okay, first, okay, for the customer ID of, uh, inside the TBL customer, this is actually the primary key, right? The soft form is the TK, right? And this one, because uh, we would like to link to another table, the foreign table, right? So this key will call it as the foreign key, 
okay, well, maybe we call it at uh, the short form is FK, okay. So how to link them together? Very, very difficult. Listen, Jack and Job here, done. Wow, very complicated, see? Extremely complicated, Jack and Job, okay. Because uh, not everyone, okay, can do Job and Job very well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how to link others? Okay, just have a look. Okay, for store ID, how to do it? Wow, complicated operation. Okay, J and job. See. And again, for the item ID, J and job. Okay, and we have already linked this table together into one. Okay, this is actually the data model. We have already linked them together, right? This is the part number one. I would like to touch you, okay? And the second thing that is, if you would like to broken the relationship, okay, how to do it? Very complicated, listen. Click this and press the delete button, that's it. Okay, do you want to delete from the model? The re if you say yes, delete from the model, then gone, the relationship. If you click cancel, remain here, okay? Very simple. Okay, this is the part number one. I would like to tell you, okay? to link them together. This is part number one, part one. And part two is, okay, can you see from the link? Let's have a look here. Very important, huh? Okay, can you see from the link? Here is one, two, asterisk, right? What does it mean by one, two, asterisk? Because for the table information, we have a different relationship. One is one to many, one to one, and many to many. Do you know what is one to many, one to one? For example, the relationship between two tables, maybe the one table is the name list of the husbands, and the another table is the wife, okay? And then the, the, these two tables, the relationship is one to one. Is it clear? Very simple, right? However, if the table like this, this is one to many, right? And for this table, one, is the name of the mother. And here is the names of the kids. Because a one mother may have more than one kids, right? Okay, so we will have what? One to many. One mother and born so many kids. Many kids. Is it here? This is one to many relationship. Okay, for our power data model, okay, um, by default, in the system, we got only one to one and one to many relationship. We won't have many to many relationship. Okay, this is very important. Okay, so at this moment in this chart, you can see something called many to many relationship. If you really want to have some many to many relationship, you need to uh, change the structure of the data model. I will tell you how to do it. Okay, I give you an example. Okay, but at this moment, is it clear? This is one to many, and we still have another relationship one to one. For many to many, it's very simple. Okay, many boys have many uh, girlfriend. That is the, the relationship, right? Many girl will have a many boyfriend. This is very simple, right? Okay, just have a look. Okay, after we got this table, then what should we? What 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 what, what we can do? Because uh, I would like to, after I got this table, I would like to do the analysis directly. So, can you see here, we've got something called the pivot table, right? Here, we've got something called the pivot table. Okay, just syndicate the pivot table, see what happened. Okay, for the, um, here, the system will fall back, okay, to the Microsoft Excel, right? And then we would like to ask me, uh, ask us for the what? For the uh, new worksheet, new worksheet. Okay, just to simply create a new worksheet, okay? And then over here, can you see on the right-hand side? Can you see on the right-hand side? What I've got here is one, two, three, four, four table all together, right? This did create difference, okay? In the old time, okay, we apply this operation on a single table. What we can find is those fields inside a table, right? But what we can see here in the Power Pivot is we can, we, they will divide it into different table and different table will have a different field, 
right? For example, if I would like to know, okay, how many businesses, okay, uh, a, a, a customer that uh, give us, okay, uh, every year, okay, uh, uh, for uh, for this during this period of time, then what should I do? Okay, very simple. We just uh, uh here we've got the uh, customer ID. We just uh, put in the row here. This is a customer ID, and I would like to know, okay, how many um uh, visitors they give uh, it, he give us. Very simple. We just uh, go to the uh transaction, and then we go to the uh invoice price, and then go to the uh message, remember the summation value. Can you see here? Okay, sum of invoice price. After that, what happened? After that, what happened? On the right hand side? On the left hand side? Can you see here? On the left hand side? We've got uh, the bank, okay? They give us uh, this, uh, this lump, sum, lump sum of money and do this lump sum of uh, business to all of us. Can you see this? Okay, if you say, if I would like to change the analysis, okay, I don't want to compare, okay, to know the, the business that given by uh, each customer. I would like to compare the um, performance of different store. Then what should I do? Remove the customer ID, and then again, I go to the store ID here, or maybe I just uh, go to the store name and check and drop to the rows here, then I will know, okay, how many business that uh, one store dig, okay, uh, in this record, is it clear? Okay. In the old time, okay. If you would like to do this kind of analysis, we need to first of all to what to link all these four table together into one with V lookup, and then after that, then you need to put it back to the uh, pivot table and then do the ana analysis. But now, what you need to do is to link the table together and then do the pivot table analysis. Once, once after the creation of the data model, CPA, right? Basically, the works of the operation is quite similar to that of the uh, pivot table. So, no need to mention in, in detail. But one more thing I would like to share with you. Because um, I would like to share with you about what is many to many. Okay. Okay. Actually, just uh, fall back to the uh, data model here. Let you know. Okay. Can you see here? Can you see the relationship between the store and the customer? Basically, one store will have what? Many customers. And one customer can go to different store to buy their uh, electric uh, appliance, right? That means the relationship is what? It's many customers and buy stuff from many store. And many store will serve many customers, right? Mm -hmm. If this kind of relationship, the relationship, what is the meaning of the relationship? It's many to many, right? And can you see from the data model here, how to manage the many to many relationship? It's very simple. We just uh, put a transaction table in between. And the transaction model, a uh, transaction record to the customer, the relationship is one to many. And here for the store and uh, to the transaction uh, record, it's one to many. And with, with the connection of this table, then we can learn up a relationship, which is what? Many to many. So if you would like to manage some relationship between many to many, you need to what? We can use a table in between. Okay? To be in between to manage the many to many relationship. Because of what we can do inside the existing system, we can manage only the by default we can manage only one to many and one to one relationship. Okay? Is it clear? Okay, before you left, okay, please sign your name in the web. It's done. Okay, it's done. Or else you can't receive my uh, video, okay, the recording, okay, after the session. Okay, so up to this moment, any questions? No questions. Um, yeah? So in this data model, the item transaction sounds like it should be a many to many. Many to many for the item one. transaction, between item and transaction, because one transaction can have many items, right, usually. Yes, correct. So uh, oh, no, no, no. One to, uh, no, no. The, okay, the here is like that because this is this, uh, actually the master record. Because cause the data table is already there, can we still edit? The no, 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 no. The transaction is not happening over here. Okay, for example, 
I mean, okay, what does it mean? That means that, that means, okay, and here I will have a single item. For example, just like our customer. Okay, because of a single customer, we'll have a many transactions with here and both. So we, the, 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 the relationship between the case record and also the customer record is the one to many. Is it here? Okay, for here, it's just, just a similar. Okay, what does it mean? That means, okay, for, for the item, okay, for the single item, for example, um, this shirt, okay, uh, can be can be sold to different customer, right? Can be sold, uh, show, uh, show to different customer. That means that we will have a different transaction for this single item, this single, uh, single number, item number, right? So that's why for the item itself in the record, we only have one record inside this table. This is this shirt. Maybe this item number is item 001. And this job, item 001 will have uh, so many transactions, maybe to the uh, to US, to China, to Korea, something like that. We have different transactions. In the transaction table, we will have a different transaction here, more than one transaction. So that's why in transaction and, and the item table, the relationship will become one to many. That means a one item number will match to many transaction ID. No, no, I was talking about the reverse, because the transaction, when the transaction usually a transaction can have many items. Just if you think of logically, oh, it's okay. No, 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 because of, it's like that. It depends on the design of the table. Yeah, so For example, the question is, if it's already designed, can we still change the table structure? It depends, I, not the table structure itself, but that is the operation of the program itself. For example, in our, uh, we need to have, uh, maybe you're you are right, the data structure. If, okay, for example, in the info, we will have another structure because in, in, in case, in case, we will have a case number over here and then under the case, we will have the same item number, we will have a different transaction, right? And this is another, another story because the, data, the database model of uh, STS is much more complicated. They eat on top, work on top, okay? They will have a, something called case, okay, for here. Basically, if you just uh, as have a, have a, um, have a, have a, have a, uh, significant, okay, just similar to that of the um, the XTS system, okay, for those transactions over here, it's only a transaction item inside the case. Okay, what on top for those transactions here is a, a case table should be on top to handle many this kind of transaction. Because of this is only a simple table for, uh, for have a simple transaction. For each transaction is only for one invoice and one item for one customer in one store. This is what the structure of this this tape uh, this database. Okay, of course, if you would like to handle just uh, as, as just uh, as complicated as like like that in the uh, XTS, then the the database uh, structure will be much more complicated. Okay, just like here, if you would like to have a complicated data structure, will maybe like this. Okay, for for the for the for the for the for here maybe the case, and here maybe the single transaction for each item, and here what we got here is to be the item and customer and supplier. Okay, the the structure will be much more complicated, just like a fractal. Okay, so that's why this kind of structure called the slow fake. Okay, at the very beginning, the simplest structure is the star schema, and what we got here, this is the star schema. If you would like to uh, to make it more complicated, okay, with some factor structure, and then it will become a slow freight streamer, okay? That means that we will have uh, so many, so many different bunch, okay? And then extend, extend, okay, to link up more different kind of information with other table, okay? Yeah, I just wonder, because this is so complicated, so how yes. do I, I won't make a mistake if I don't know the structure, if I just have many... Hey, so I that's why, those are, that's why at the very beginning, if you would like to design a database, we need to, first of all, to have our ER diagram, yeah, you need to get help from the ITS. <laughs> you need to get help from the ITS. Yeah, because uh, uh, some traditional training for IT guys, we need to first of all to draw something called the ER diagram to decide the whole structure, and and then what next is uh, based on the ER diagram, and then to decide this kind of structure. In the old time, we need to type in the code, okay, with the C code as uh, instruction. But now, what we need to do here is just a uh, draw and write and drag and drop something like that. It's much more simpler now already. <laughs> okay? So, any other questions? If no more questions, just sign it on the attendance sheet and then you will be le left here. If you still have any questions, just left behind and ask me. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you. <sighs>